Hello, welcome to the Shack of M1 GAO. I was recently asked on Twitter how to go about converting from uh, a voltage in D in uh, microvolts to a power in uh, uh, dB millivolts. So uh, it's going to be the subject of this video and it may be useful to others, so I thought I would uh, share it up on YouTube. So the original question I was asked was how do I convert from 0.16 microvolts to minus 123 decibel millivolt. You have to excuse the uh, crudity of my presentation here, it's just paint on a touchscreen laptop. Um, but uh, it allows me to share the uh, calculator easily as well, so uh, I'll show you that in a minute. So this uh, value here on the left, the uh, voltage in microvolts is obviously just the voltage, and this power here is in um, dB or logarithmic scaled uh, milliwatts but it's a power and a voltage so that will cause us to need to know a bit more information we'll come across that in a moment but we need to also know the impedance of the system and for this we should be assuming it's uh, 50 ohms so we're going to make that assumption the question I was asked doesn't tell me that but we can make that assumption um, because it's coming from a kind of radio um, training, um, that kind of thing. So 50 ohms is a typical typical number. So the first thing we need to do is convert the voltage into a power. And that's what we're going to need, the 50 ohm part. But we'll go, for, go through it from, from first principles. So we should normally, normally know that um, from your uh, basic training, or uh, school uh, school science lessons, the, the power is voltage times current. So P equals VI or IV, and they're interchangeable. And you'll also remember this magic triangle, as I think it was called, uh, as well. And that basically just tells us that V equals I R. And obviously, we can rearrange that as we need to. So, what do we know here? We we, we need to know the power, which is on the left here. We need to know the power and we're told the voltage. What we don't know is the current. So we can use our magic triangle here on the left, on the right, sorry, um, and we're looking for current. So if we, if we cover this current here, we see the current which we've covered is V divided by R. That then means that we can replace this equation. So we can say it's the same thing as V we already had times our V divided by R, which we're getting from over here. So we've just taken that bit and swapped the I in the first one for this uh, this thing, which is we've said is equivalent to I, V over R. And what that means is we get V times V divided by R, which is V squared divided by R. That's a fairly common identity. You can uh, do the same and you'll get P equals I squared times R if you do the same thing but you switch the the voltage out for current and rearrange this differently instead so it may be worth remembering them you may be even be giving them we don't need that that for here but um, may be useful okay so where do we go from here we know here that the the, um, the resistance is 50 ohms so we already know that R is going to be 50 and we're now given uh, a value for V, which is at the top here, 0.16 microvolts. So we can start by plugging these numbers in. So let's let's do that. Let's say power that we want is, we've got a, a voltage here of 0.16 microvolts. What I'm going to do is take this uh, SI value thing here, and you can see here it has a multiplication factor. I've gone for micro, and I've highlighted it already, is uh, 10 to the minus 6. So we can say times 10 to the minus 6 here. I don't think we've got to square it. And then the whole thing is divided by 50. Okay, that looks a bit daunting, but we shall see what we're going to do with that now. And that's going to give us a power in, in watts as well. So our answer is going to be in watts. Uh, so let's grab a calculator and let's get started with that. So this should look similar to what the RSTB recommends you use in most of their books. Um, well, certainly when I've been involved in the RSGB books, this is the calculator or the series of calculator we reference. And this one's really convenient because I can use it on the screen and you guys can see what I'm what I'm doing as well. So 
There we go. Okay, so let's start then. Let's say um, we're going to do 0.16. If we use this button here, it's hard to show you without touching it, but this button here um, times 10 to the x, and you see it's got times 10x there, then minus 6. That allows us to type in the top half of that uh, fraction. And of course, we want to square it, so we're just going to press that. Now we can go along and build up the equation, but it's easiest probably at this point to just do a sanity check. If we just press equals, we get the v squared value, which is the top half of this fraction. If we then divide it by 50, which is our impedance, we get a power in watts, which I'll write down on the, on the slide here, of 5.12 times 10 to the power of minus 16. So 5.12 times 10 to the power of minus 16 watts. Okay, that's well and good, but we need a value in, if you remember the question is in, is in milliwatts here, so we need a number in milliwatts. So our um, milliwatts value, and this is a small m, not a big m, so milliwatts, not megawatts, is our power in watts times a thousand. Oops, running out of space here. <coughs> so we need... This is in this is in watts. If we want it in, oops, if we want it in milli watts. Having a bit of trouble here. Then we just do 5.12 times 10 to the power of minus 16, which is our value in watts, times the whole thing by a thousand, and that will then give us the power in milliwatts. And that's going to be 5.12 times 10 to the minus 13 these three zeros just take off of here. But let's do that on the calculator just to show you. So we just times 1,000, so it's answer times 1,000. You can see it's 5.12 times 10 to the power of minus 13. And then that is in milliwatts, which is what we were after. Okay, so we've that, now got a power in milliwatts. What we need to do now, step two, is convert that to dBm. So all we need to do is just take the, the power log of this. That's fairly straightforward. So power in dB is equal to 10 times the log, log to the base 10 of the power here in milliwatts. Now it's probably worth mentioning at this point that I've chosen to convert this into milliwatts already. You could equally do that at this point because uh, with uh, using watt instead, and there's a, just a simple uh, conversion factor as well. We'll talk about that in a moment. Um, but you may see um, dB watts, and you may also see uh, dB milliwatts for lower powers. And the difference between them is obviously uh, the difference between milliwatts and watts, which is a thousand times in the linear linear units here, because we timed this thousand, and the difference in dB is uh, 30 dB difference. So if you times it by a thousand, you're adding 30 dB. It's a bit of an aside, um, but uh, also worth mentioning that you may also see dBW. And if you if you don't do this step here, if you if you choose to just take the power of this in dB in watts, you'll get an answer in dBW, and then you just need to add this a conversion factor of 30 dB to get to the other to get to the milliwatts. But uh, hopefully that makes sense. Um, <laughs> it's a little bit confusing, and I get that logs can be a bit tricky. And my explanation may not have been the best, but let's give this a shot. So it's 10 times 10 to the log base 10 and then our previous result was 5.12 times 10 to the minus 13 that's 13 there hopefully we should get the right answer that we're expecting so we can take 10 log of our answer and you can see minus 122.9 D, B, M. Okay, and that was what we were expecting. That obviously 
just rounds to minus 123 dBm, which is all the way back what we were expecting here, minus 123. Um, so that was one way to do it. And that's there, there's, there's ways of remembering formulas and tricks and stuff, but I always find that if you just start from the first principles, doing this part here, you'll get it right every time because it's obvious what's going, going on. You'd never remember how to get to this very end formula, these very end formulas down here. If you work through it methodically, it maybe takes you another few seconds with a pen and pencil, a pencil and paper, but you, you know exactly what's going on, so that would be that would be my advice. Um, just to show you the conversion factor here, uh, this is we've already got the answer, so you'll feel free to stop watching now. Oops. Uh, ah, Windows has magic hot keys. Um, if we instead use the power in watts, so 5.12 times 10 to the minus 16. 5.12 times 10 to the power of minus 16. This is in watts. We can do 10 times log 10 of this. Uh, 5.12 times 10 to the minus 16. And that's going to give us, let's start that again. So 10 times the log of 10, uh, 5.12 times 10 to the power of minus 16 at this point. This is now a power in watts, and you will see we get minus 152.9. So we get minus 152.9, but this now is in uh, dBW, not um, milliwatts. And then we have this extra conversion factor of 30 dB, if we add those together, we'll get back to the 122.9 value that we've seen here. So the same result. So just to show you that if you do it in dBW, you just add this 30 dB offset, which is the same as timesing it by a thousand. We did it linearly because I think watt to milliwatts is easier to see than this magic 30 number. But either option works. So hopefully that was useful. Um, I can also show you going the other way. So let's, uh, how are we going to do this one? <laughs> it's just going to be a moment to think about it in my head. So let's go minor, whoops, Windows hotkeys, 123 dB M to, uh, what should it be? We know it's approximately 0.16 microvolt. So at this point in the video, I clumsily managed to uh, <laughs> disable the audio recording. So I'm having to go back and re-narrate this part. So hopefully it will still make sense. So what we need to do first of all is, is reverse the logarithm to the base 10. So when we do 10 log 10 of the power previously, we need to reverse that now. What, what the log does is it tells us uh, what power of 10 we need to use to get to the original number. So reversing that. We just take 10 and raise it to a power. So you may be used to squaring something. Here we're going to raise it to the power of minus 123 to our value in dBm. And here this time I'm going to use the offset of uh, minus 30 instead. Uh, we, we, we Last time we did it, we, we multiplied it by 1,000. This time I'm going to do it the opposite around, so using the, getting it to dBw here. So I've used this minus 30 uh, uh, minus 30 um, difference uh, offset to get to dBw. And then because we do 10 log of that, we have to divide it by 10. And that's what I'm doing here. So using the calculator, we can clear that, move it out of the way. So we start by entering the, the original power in dB millivolts, and we get, uh, with the offset, we get minus 153 dBw, so that's the decimal watts. And we divide that by 10, and that gives us everything inside the bracket. So we're now going to raise 10 to the power of that. So we take 10, and then using the power of the answer, 
we get this value here, which gives us a linear power measurement. So we've converted the minus 123 dBm back into watts. It's 0 0.511, 5011. Uh, so I'm sent to the minus 16 uh, watts. I'm just checking that now. It's looking good. So what we need to do once we've got this value in, in watts is, is get back to the voltage. So we knew from before that P equals V squared over R. And we're assuming again that our resistance, our impedance of the system R is still 50 ohms. We can then rearrange this to get V squared. And so what we're going to do here is going to take R and multiply both sides by R. Take that R and put it up there, and that gives us uh, P times R is equal to V squared. What that then means is V is equal to the square root of P times R. So we've got a way to calculate V from the values we've got already. We know P from, we just worked that out, so we can start plugging the numbers in, and we know R as well because we're assuming that's 50 ohms. So uh, it's going to be 5.0118 times 10 to the power of minus 16 times by the resistance or the impedance of the system, which is 50 ohms. So R is there and the power is the first part, <coughs> which is the value from up here. And what we've missed out at this point is the square root. Uh, there we go. Put that back in. So V is the square root of that expression. So it's just a case of uh, pulling up the calculator. We can pr pr practically enter this into, into the calculator in one go. So we press the square root of the answer times by 50 and then equals. And that gives us 1.583 times 10 to the 7 volts. Sorry, times 10 to the minus 7 volts, that's important. The minus seven, and that's in volts. <clears throat> so there's a cool trick here with the calculator, just to use the engineering notation button. So if you look above the between the sort of seven and eight on the keyboard, just above that, there's a button that says ENG in capitals. And what that does is it, it uses engineering notation. You'll see nano, milli, pico, giga. Etc. They're all powers of multiple of three. At the moment, we've got this times 10 to the power of minus seven, and the engineering button will tell the calculator to refactorize that into a, a rejigger the numbers around into a into a into a power of three. So pressing it once, you'll see it comes up with 158.3 times 10 to the minus nine. And then minus nine, if we look at the um, metric prefixes, you'll see minus nine corresponds to nano, which is the one below the micro line that I highlighted previously. Um, so it's 158.3 nanovolts, but pressing shift and the engineering button, as you just saw me do, that will shift it the other way. And it says, OK, I don't want that. I know it's not a whole number anymore, but I'd like the, the number to be a, a power of six. So I get uh, 0.161583, sorry, times 10 to the power of minus six volts. If we recall from the SI units prefix again, the metric prefix, the 10 to the minus 6 is the same thing as micro. So we can scrub that out and replace it with microvolts now. And we've got 0 0.158 microvolt, uh, which is our voltage. And that's approximately equal to the 0 0.16 microvolt that we were expecting to start with. So there we go. And that's where we were, where we were heading. Okay, so it just reminds me to say thanks for uh, watching. Hopefully that was useful. And uh, yeah, uh, hopefully catch you on here at some point, 7.3 from now from M1GEO.